Good evening and a very warm welcome to your English news package with a radio and a television tone for the hour. Making headlines, chief justices and magistrate judges have been authorized to ban the release of any sexual abuse court cases to media outlets. The criminal offences amendment bills will not apply to vehicle strategies in residential areas and the government insurance report regarding cost law limited was handed down to the finance committee during yesterday's parliamentary deliberations. We'll have these and more stories later on in the bulletin together with a sport to wrap up with the latest weather update. Now with the stories in details. The whole House Committee approved the amendment of the Criminal Offences Bill to authorize the Chief Justices and Magistrate Judges to ban the release of any sexual abuse court cases to media outlets. Mark Ake with more on this story. The Minister of Law, Honorable Sami Waipulu, elaborated that sexual abuse cases are sensitive to the public due to traditional customs. During the Parliament discussions on the issue today, Tongatapo 2 MP Dr. Uhila Moilangi Fussi said it is understood that this law would ban any media outlets from running news on sexual abuse court cases because they will affect sexual abuse victims. Dr. Uhila Moilangi added that the act only bans media outlet mediums such as radio, television and newspaper or any written publications from releasing stories on sexual abuse cases but he suggested that this ban extend to social media and other forms of communication, especially since many people use social media. Meanwhile, other members of the whole house committee questioned why the amendments are being made to include social media, since there have been cases of defamations on social media that the law doesn't punish, especially social media posts that defame the royal family. Vaipolo said this is under the Attorney General Office's jurisdiction and they are looking into the matter. However, the whole House Committee passed the Criminal Offences Bill for 2022. The Criminal Offences Amendment to Bill 2022 will not apply to deaths and injuries caused by vehicle accidents in residential areas. This comes after the whole House Committee approved amendments of Clause 25 to 27 of this bill. Mark Ake again with the details. During the whole House Committee's discussions on the Criminal Offences Amendment Bill for 2022, the Ewa People's Representative, Lord Nuku, was concerned about the punishment for those who kill or injure people through careless driving in residential areas, since the bill only applies to road injuries and fatalities that occur on public roads. The bill does not apply to incidents that take place in the front yard of houses or even inside. In response to Lord Nuku's concern, the Minister of Law, Honorable Samuel Vaipolo, said that in such cases where a vehicle accident causes death or injuries in residential areas, the culprit will be dealt with in the court of law. The whole House Committee approved the amendments to the Criminal Offences Bill for 2022. The fifth agenda of yesterday's Parliament sitting was the Government Insurance Report. The Parliament's clerk read a report that was submitted by the Minister of Finance, Honorable Dadafu Moyaki, to the Speaker of the House in regard to the Cost Law Limited requesting financial assistance from the Government. This report was submitted on the 25th of July this year. During the reading of this report, it was mentioned that Cabinet had approved 5.6 million Baanga insurance from the Tonga Development Bank to go towards Koslo under certain conditions. Condition in Roman numbers First, that the Tonga Development Bank and Koslo come to an understanding that the products and goods that are being insured must be higher than the insurance money, 5.6 million, as detailed in condition number six. Number two, that TDB assist Koslo to create a new way of making profits and revenue to pay off the insurance within 24 months. Third, the interest rate is 0.5% of the insurance. Fourth, the TDB holds 15 million paanga of Koslo's goods in collateral. Fifth, government will offer business advice through the Ministry of Finance to the loan. Sixth, the signed agreement for this insurance is between TDB and the Ministry of Finance. This will be one of the government's investments with the objective of helping major Tongan businesses 
so they don't die, as over 25 families are currently employed by COSLO, also since the company is beneficial to the country. The government's current insurance is 9 million per annum, 97,000. 120, who includes insurance from the previous year. The terms of the agreement were agreed upon by TDB and COSLO on the 19th of May this year. Before the ballot, Dongatapu 5 MP Dr. Aisake Eke asked the Finance Minister to reiterate the details of this insurance loan. Chairperson, I support this as it is a difficult time for businesses. I understand that condition number three says that 0.5% of the interest is to be paid, which will go to the Ministry of Finance because that's their quality fee. Secondly, the reading of the goods that have already been insured in June of the last fiscal year was 12 or 9.1 million. I asked the finance minister whether the guarantee is 5.6 and what is the remaining balance of the 9.1, 5.6 million, because I've noticed that, that the guarantee for the 2021 fiscal year is worth 18.6 million per annum. The finance minister requested that the report be submitted to the finance committee to discuss and 16 MPs were in favour. Tonga Police Commissioner Shane McLennan participated via virtual presence to Suva, Fiji on Friday last week and addressed the launch of the Pacific Regional Initiative and support for effective counter-trafficking in persons Pacific Rise CTIP. The five years partnership with the Asia Foundation worth 10 million US dollars engages the Pacific nations of Fiji, the Republic of Marshall Islands, Papua New Guinea and Tonga. The partnership objectives are to implement counter-trafficking in persons interventions. Commissioner McLennan stated that this is a milestone and another step in continuing the national efforts of collaboration across the sectors and partnering with their community to ensure that we have a robust framework for improving prevention, protection and prosecution in countering trafficking in persons. He highlighted the support to the multi-sectoral approach that engages government, civil society and the private sector. Solid and robust relationships are essential to making a lasting impact in a way that meets national priorities and aligns with community leadership. The opportunity to work with USAID and the Asia Foundation is also acknowledged and they welcome the strategic, programmatic and financial oversight that their partnership will provide for the project. In his address, Commissioner McLennan concluded that Tonga's efforts to meet global standards will work in partnership with a Pacific Rise CTIP to build a safer community for all, one in which all members of the community are safe, protected, empowered and connected to address the challenges of trafficking in persons. The declaration of a state of emergency was renewed yesterday, Monday the 1st of August, until Monday the 29th of this month. This renewal is due to the increasing amount of COVID-19 community transmission in Tonga since the 1st of February 2022. The declaration of a public health uh, emergency pursuant to Section 164 and 165 of the Public Health Act dated 17th of uh, February 2022 and the declaration of COVID-19 to be a notify. This is under the Public Health Regulations 2021. It is clear that there is a rapid and continuous public health emergency in Tonga and that is still necessary for emergency powers to be exercised in order to prevent or minimize risk and the loss of human life to COVID-19 in Tonga. And from the Supreme Court, a man from Hala Ovabe, Augustino Langi, pleaded guilty at the Supreme Court this morning to two counts of possession of illicit drugs in Huadolgori prison. This incident occurred on the 20th and the 21st of December last year inside Huadolgori prison in which he was caught with 4.94 grams of methamphetamine and 2.319 grams of cocaine. He pleaded 
guilty to these both uh, charges. Lang is currently serving at the Huadol Dolly prison for other matters. Meanwhile, at the same court, a woman from Bili, Cecia Viniwanga, was uh, charged with one count of uh, dangerous driving causing death. This incident occurred on the 19th of April this year at Nukalofa in which she was uh, driving on a rainy day and uh, not on her vehicle's light and hit Sateki Vainikolomaile and caused his uh, death. Viniwanka pleaded not guilty to this charge. However, she will reappear in court on the 14th of uh, November. Sports is up next with Mark Ake and it is currently sponsored by Pacific Timber and Hardware. The Tonga Table Tennis Federation held the first ever monthly tournament for the year last weekend. On Saturday, the tournament was held at the Tassanok office in Dofoa. There were three categories in this tournament, under 12, junior and senior. Sios Anna Folamoitui claimed first place in the under 12 category for girls. Second place was Grace Fahamokioa. In the boys division, Kanani Jr. Pasi came first, Aisake Folamoitui second, and George Latu third. In the junior category, Mele Kaufusi Fungamai won the girls division, and second was Rika Folamoitui. Boys division, Salesi Cocker claimed first place, Inoke Pepa second, and at third, Ponepate Fulamoitui. The senior category saw Melika Fusi Fungawai win the girls' division, and Luisa Viamantahau came second, third, Vika Fulamoitui. In the boys' division, Sales Cocker took first place, Laie Pepa second, and Inoke Pepa at third. And that concludes tonight's English news package. But before we part, here's a one final look at tonight's top stories. Chief Justices and Magistrate Judges have been authorised to ban the release of any sexual abuse court cases to media outlets. The Criminal Offences Amendment Bills will not apply to vehicle strategies in residential areas and Government Insurance Report regarding Cost Law Limited was handed down to the Finance Committee during yesterday's parliamentary deliberations. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Ali Situpo. Have a blessed evening.